It is 13 hours in Guyana and right across the Eastern Caribbean. It is time for us to uh, begin today's edition of Wake Up Guyana. It is Tuesday, the second day of September in the year 2020. Good afternoon to you, wherever you're joining us from. And it is time, like I've mentioned before, for Wake Up Guyana with senior journalist Leonard Gildari. Leonard, a pleasant good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you guys down in the studio there, Joshua. And of course, Raj, how are you guys doing today? Is everything going good? My boys have disappeared there. So I want to say a good day to you right across Gay. And it's September the 2nd, and there are many things to talk about today. Uh, we are going to tell you a little about COVID. We're going to tell you a little about Parliament. We're going to tell you a little about what's happening on the Kaito News front page today. And we're going to say welcome to the special edition because it's special it's second day and this entire month is going to be special when it comes to the wake up gay and show guess who's celebrating something it is the amerindians and i wish that they could have been somewhere where we're going to taste some of their food they have uh, some very good dishes out there and uh, they have some very good art and craft and if there's some way that you could do something to support them uh, they have some tomato and um, ketchup they have some uh, some of the best hammocks that I've ever seen uh, right across the, the, this land and other places that I, I would have went. They even have peanut butter. You would imagine that honey, a lot of stuff. Uh, but when it comes to, to some good dishes, they have one of the best. Um, I forget what's the name of it. It looks like a pepper pot, but a white pepper pot. I think two more it is. You guys uh, um, would um, uh, tell me if you you know but it is it is something they, they have something there a very rich history and culture so i want to say welcome uh, to this uh, to this wake up gay show and you should wake up i am waking up it has been uh, three days now since i would receive the news and i want to share with you because i'm operating from home self-isolation here and uh, it is because I've tested positive for COVID-19 and I am throwing the line when it comes to what the regulation says. And what the regulation says is going to be pertinent to some news that we have for you based on what the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, would have said a little earlier in the day with regards to two parliamentarians who tested positive and uh, uh, what would have come out after that. So. We are going to bring you that. Uh, so it is a wake up day and a show here. I want to say welcome to all, everybody who would have been joining us today here um, on Kaicho Radio 99.1, 99.5. You could also get us on Kaicho Radio uh, on Facebook or Kaicho Radio live stream on YouTube. So we want you to join and we want you to be interactive with us today because as every day we have so many people and there is going to be a lady who's going to be surprised today. Today, we are not going to say anything about that. Um, that's because she's really touched our heart with the story. And, um, and despite all, everything that she's going through, she would still have a smile on her face in her voice. And these are the kind of things that we want to say. They may be days when we're going to be done. This pandemic has really affected our good people of this country. The smiles on the face went away for a little because of uh, uh, this whole pandemic, this whole political situation. And it has not been good for people. However, once there's life, I always am very positive. I want to pass some of those positive attitude on to you that we should never, ever give up. There's going to be times that when everything would seem down to you, uh, there's so many things in my life that I could share with you. Uh, so many hardships that I would have went through, from suicide to deportation to many other things. Even some politicians who decide they're going to make use of it uh, to try to get after us when Dr. Yoga, Mahadeo, and myself 
we were every day coming to you over on Kaichpo Radio, coming to you on the daytime elections watch show, and in the room five nine two. We came under so many attacks, um, you know, character and one other things, things that didn't bother us because if you allow to get it to, you're gonna stop functioning, you're gonna stop working, and I'm not gonna allow that to happen. So the whole point is today I want to say to you that you should not ever ever give up. Just every day you get up, you might feel a little dumb, but get up and get the things doing. If you have to sweep the yard, sweep the yard. It's a routine that makes us um, uh, go in. It keeps the wheel turning. But we should also tell you, if you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're not getting the right results, do not continue to do the same thing. Do something differently. You're not going to get a different results. And that is something very positive. It's something that is in our own mindset when it comes to our attitude in life, the way that uh, we would approach life generally. So I want to say to you, thank you for joining us here on Kite Show Radio on this Wake Up Day show because we want you to wake up today. We want you to pay attention very closely as to what we're going to say today because there are going to be many persons calling in and we are going to open those lines in a very short while and uh, we are going to be reading you some of those news because we want to tell you what is happening here and we want to also hear from you what is happening in your area we have i had a call from my reporter yesterday after the show in Eskimo, and he say man what what is it that you did to me here you give my number out and everybody's calling me so we have a lot of people in the Eskimo area who's been joining us day in day out and i want to say good day to you whether you're in the kapui area whether you're in the anarchy area whether you're in the charity area whether you're in a minibus in the Supernami area or you're in a taxi, whether you're a taxi driver, whether you're a speedboat operator, I want to say good day to you guys. Keep your head up. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We have to get this pandemic. This pandemic is a little uh, something that uh, should not be uh, uh, wanting to overcome us. Rather, we are in charge. Today, we are in charge. And so let us get our act together, like I say every single day. Let us pull ourselves together. Let us be very strong about this entire thing and let us continue to do what we've been doing. Plant a little garden, play a little with the kids, make sure that they are protected. If you're seated in the minibus, wear your mask. If you're going to go into a store, wear your mask, wash your hands, make sure that you protect yourself. This thing uh, is not an easy thing. I've been suffering some headaches, some, um, it's difficult. I'm not sure whether it's all up in the mind, but I'm not going to allow it to get with me. I'm going to get up every single day and I'm going to do what I have to do. I'm going to eat my fruits, eat my vegetables, um, drink my vitamin C. Uh, if you have that, you should ensure that you do that to get some orange, do what you have to do. But it is not easy, but uh, we have to do, we, we can't stop living. And so we are going to stop here because I want to bring you the news as it is today. You guys have been very good to me. Very good to the radio, very good to the rest of the people of Guyana because your words is what encouraged me, encouraged us at the radio station, and encouraged the newspaper to continue to do what it has to do. That is not being a political mouthpiece, but being the voice of the people. That's what it is. We have no constituency. We don't have a dog or a horse or a cat in the race. Uh, we don't have anybody that uh, we, we are backing. We're not backing anybody. We want to see the rule of law that functions. We want to see that everybody benefits from the resources of this country. We want to see the rule of law that everybody is being dealt even handedly by the government, by the judiciary, by the police and everybody. We want to see the police do their work. Yesterday, we were a part the situation there. I passed it on. We have somebody looking into the matter there. Uh, it is very sad that you should be hearing that police officers, men and women, being told to uh, take up duties at particular places and there's not even a toilet. Imagine you sending a woman out in the bushes to do her uh, business down there. How, how much more do we, uh, should we tell ourselves that we need to get our act together? This is something that is not good for our country, and we should be uh, asking for better. Better must come. I think politicians once said that, and I will echo that. Better must come for our country because we deserve so much more. This is our land. This is where we were born. We know, we know what it is. We know what we would have went through the eight is all the folks will tell you. If you're younger and you know you don't know what the eight is and the seventies would have brought, it was hardship. But we would have learned discipline from that. 
And if you, you were able to live through those, those times and you lived through the 90s where Guyana was making a turn all for the better, and you lived through the 2000s and so, you know that we are a resilient people. And so if that being the case, we should be asking for the rule of law because we have so much oil here, we have so much resources here that our rule of law should ensure that our leaders, our uh, regulators and everybody do the job. When you've taken that oath and you enter the office, you're there to serve the people. And this is not a knock on any government or anything. It is just for us to remind ourselves our place in this country, our duty as a stakeholder, our duty to tell the people that's in charge, hey, wait a minute, I'm in charge here, I'm your employer, I'm the one who who put or who casted uh, that vote for you. And so you must ensure that you deliver the services that you promise. You made some promises in the manifesto. We intend to talk about that in a little while because uh, this month is uh, Amerindian month and you would know that the president of Ghana, Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, would have made some statements with regards to what he has promised for the Amerindians. And he has made it very, very clear that he understands, and based on that statement, I'm going to try to get some excerpts for you to read it out. Based on the statements that we have there, it is very clear that the government uh, seems to be in tune uh, with the fact that they, they have promised, they've made promises in the manifesto. We would have received calls yesterday uh, from our people across this land who some people agree, some people disagree, saying that, you know, how the president could have gone into Taiga Bay. But when the president did, went up to Burbis yesterday and he did share out some hamburgers, he met with the people, he promised to talk about uh, the show industry and some of the measures, the COVID-19 measures that he has uh, uh, mapped out for the people. And let me tell you this, when it comes to the COVID-19 measures, he has said it very clearly that before the end of the week that we are going to make some very concrete announcements for the COVID-19 families who have been affected and everybody has been affected. So it's not only help for the families, it's also help for the businesses. So we are going to wait on some of the announcements that is going to come from the government before the week is over. Um, so we, I am coming to you remotely on the Wake Up Guyana show. And so I want you to wake up yourself today and I want you to get things done, doing, get things done. You, they, you know, you might not have a job. You might have lost your job. It doesn't mean that you can't clean the place. It doesn't mean that maybe you can't take the opportunity to maybe prepare a little garden here or there. Let us do something that is different from yesterday because if you remain stagnant, if you remain looking out for others to help us, it is not going to help. So let us be very, very clear as to what is it that we want in this beautiful country of ours? What is it that we'd like to see our government do? And how we want them to de deliver it? How is it that we want to see the opposition to operate? How is it that we want to see the rule of law, our judges, our policemen? We have to talk about that, that those are conversations that we want to see for this beautiful country of ours. So good day to you guys down in Barbie. How are you guys doing there? From the down to Crabwood Creek, and I did see a story. Somebody has done counterfeit 5,000, say counterfeit Grangers. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to call it Grangers, those $5,000 bills anymore. Um, but somebody's done counterfeit money. You guys have got to get it job. You got to do the correct thing. When you do that, you're going to be caught, and caught you are, because somebody's going to notice that it is. And they're going to remember the person who tendered that fake bill, and they're going to report to the police, and the police is going to pick you up, and you're going to be caught sometime or the other because you didn't pass it. Let's do the right thing. Let's don't do the illegal things. It is not. Uh, it is not helpful towards this country. It's not helpful to what our country or people see. I see another car accident this morning. I see a hit and run. Somebody hit somebody across the river there, and you know, and the the, the vehicle escape. I hope that it can't call it. I'm not sure what you're doing on the road so late in the evening. I'm not sure what the other individual would have been doing. What I can tell you is that when you flee from the scene and you're caught, you should be jailed. Because you, you know, there should be no, 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 no bail for you because you didn't flee from the scene. You flight risk. The minute that you flee from the scene, you are flight risk. So let's get down into the, the tick of things today. Um, this is what the September the second newspaper, the Kaicho News, would be saying. Your biggest newspaper, the largest selling daily, and uh, it, it is. It's been bringing us some hard hitting news. You know, Glenn Lal is not an easy man when it comes to ensuring that he gets the news out to the people. He said, "I don't want to be like nobody else," and pushes the staff to do that. So, good day to you, Mr. Glenn Lal, and family, and to the rest of the Kaicho News crew there. 
we are part, but we together still because I know that you have us on meeting seven times per day, and that's what you do. We well, we enjoy it. We like the challenge. But you are hard taskmaster, so we appreciate that too. Makes us into better people. So good day to you, Mr. Lal, and I hope that you're having a wonderful day. So let's see what the Kaichu News. It's Wednesday edition, September the second. Alex Ponzi scheme was slapped the twelve more charges. Interesting story. So uh, this is about the third time they would have appeared in court. This is no other than Yuri Garcia Dominguez and his wife, Atika Ishmael. They appeared in court yesterday again on the East Coast of them. I slapped with 12 more charges. I think they have in excess of 41 charges now. And they remain out on or in remand because uh, they have been viewed as flight risk. As you could recall, it was only in June that Mr. Dominguez was handed a uh, citizenship uh, for Guyana. And this is after, by, after he would have applied and he would have married a Guyanese woman. In any case, the two of them are in jail and they're being accused of uh, making false pretend or obtaining money by false pretense, which is, I'm saying to you that I could deliver certain things and I don't deliver it and you paid over and I can't deliver those things. And so they're being charged. And that's the basis of it. That's what it says in essence. Um, now we expect, we understand more charges are coming. Um, and uh, let's see where this goes. But it's an interesting case. I'm really, really sorry for the folks who would have invested because they didn't invest thinking it was something that was above board. Um, uh, what we also could tell you is that uh, that that they were not authorized. I see some, even some religious leaders are still selling other things like uh, the, the foreign exchange schemes and um, uh, foreign exchange trading. And there's been some warnings about that too. We're going to have to ask the authorities sometime or the other, like if you want to sign up for those foreign exchange trading and you want to actually trade on, on the world market for, for foreign currency, how does it work? Are, are you likely to make money? Those are interesting questions. So if you're going to get yourself, invest $400,000 into something that you don't know about with the hopes of making money, does not make sense. So you got to make sure. Some people are going to tell you that, you are, yes, uh, you are going to be trained, uh, but listen to the experts and listen to what the experts, people who know what they're saying, what they're warning. And this is not to knock anybody, but this is just us, me, Leonard Gildari, doing my job based on the resource that well, what I would have done. Whenever I don't know anything, I go onto the internet, Google sometimes, and you learn. You call up a friend who's involved in a business. What happened here? Like my bridge collapsed a couple of days back. There was a big hole in it. And um, I got mad. I got mad with my, my contractor. Um, why didn't he put the... the, the um, what do you call it? The steel underneath. When I look at a couple of steel that I had there, he says, that, you know, the board rotten out underneath. And um, I got a little upset with him because um, I look at it there. That should not have happened. But uh, the, the point is, I picked up the phone and called a couple of my friends. I said, how do we fix this? So they explained to me what, what, what kind of steel we need to put underneath. And I had to fix it because the car was left stuck in the yard. There was a big hole on the bridge. Uh, the, the, the car would have probably stuck into the, the drain or something that's there. But so we need to educate ourselves when it comes to things that we don't know about. And there's so many ways that we could do it. Call on somebody, check Google, go on the internet. There's so many resources that are out there that could uh, you know, give us a little more that we could think about. So good day to all of our good folks in Guyana. Thank you for joining us on the Wake Up Guyana show. And it is, we coming to you here uh, from Demerara. And so we go back to the headlines of the Kaicho Radio, Kaicho News Radio of September the 2nd. And it's exciting Guyana prospects needed to rescue Exxon shareholder, analysts, and the oil company, but oil company still refused to give Guyana a fair deal. I want to stop here and, and come back to the story here. There's a big company in the US that everybody listens to. It's like the Christopher Rams across here. And uh, the analysts that uh, would open their mouth and talk about certain things that we have to stand up and listen to them. The company name is Goldman and I think Goldman Sachs. Goldman and Sachs, I think it is. And it is. They warned, they said, you, you know, they, they were warned about Exxon and its uh, future outlook. And they say that Exxon is something, if you have money in it, it's not such a good idea right now. The stocks have been falling over the last couple of years. Um, and so this story here is about 
uh, story that came out, I think, is out of the Forbes, and and uh, it talked about Exxon um, outlook and how the shares have been falling. But here's the interesting thing that you should know: they talked about Guyana and the, what Guyana meant to the future of Exxon. And, and let me repeat that: what Guyana meant to the future of Exxon. Guyana is the cash cow for for Exxon, and so. Right about now, you would recall that Exxon is fighting with Guyana. They, say they, they have some issues. Guyana says it doesn't want to give them a permit um, for the third phase of construction or, or production uh, that they want to enter into. It's called Payara. And um, Exxon is saying that Guyana should give, us, give, give them that permit as early as possible. They've already given out contracts. They've already borrowed money. That's because they bank it heavily on Guyana. And people warning about uh, the Exxon and what Guyana means. So there, there's a thinking that we should be able to, you know, let's pay attention to what Exxon is doing to us. And maybe there's, there's a lot of opportunity here for us to strike a better deal. The story is telling us and the company, while they know that the situation is happening, they're still refusing you know, to even sit at the table. In the meantime, we are agitating for a better deal. And um. The people are worried, and so the authorities, we will continue to follow the story. Oil, the oil in Guyana, that's not going to go away. This story here is going to be dominating the news for the next couple of months or years ahead because it is big. We could really, really make some money out of it. And everybody could live like, uh, you know, have a level of life that's good. We could have nice highways. We could have two or three harbor bridge across the Demerara River. We could have old people, sorry, citizens some people being able to benefit from maybe a hundred thousand dollars in a pension per month. These are real things that we can benefit from. We could be able to be able to walk into a or we could be able to bring in a, a, into this country a SUV and not pay taxes because we, there's no need to bring the taxes a tax. The money is going to come from oil. So let us get our act together in terms of when the authorities that is and understand that we are in a very good position. We are in a good negotiating position right now because Exxon is on the back foot. That's what the story is. And so you need to read it. Exciting the and prospects needed to rescue Exxon shareholders, analysts, the headline in Kaichu News today. Opposition MPs, well, yesterday parliament started and this is what I need to tell you. Opposition MPs walk out of the National Assembly over Schumann's appointment as deputy speaker. And so, uh, the uh, Schumann, Mr. Schumann, Lennox Schumann of the Liberty and Justice Party, he was given a nod over uh, former Speaker Raphael Trotman. And uh, uh, there was right away Cathy Hughes, who was a former minister within the coalition, call it an abomination. She would have come under criticism because there were others who said, Why are you criticizing? You could remember in 2011, I think, the amounts that there was two, I think it was Debbie Batten, I think Raphael Trotman or somebody who was back to back um, as, as having the speaker deputy posi uh, speaker position right there and then. And so, you know, why are you complaining now? There was also the argument is that if it is that you are arguing that the convention is that the deputy speaker is going to go to the opposition. Well, it did go to an opposition and the opposition is Schumann. He's one of the opposition. So this is an interesting, so they would have walked out after taking their oath in office. At the end of the day, these are people who are already uh, parliamentarian, so they don't care. They're probably going to get their concessions, GTP concessions, and otherwise, whether they're torn up or not, they're going to get a salary. So this is something that I really need to look at. I have a personal issue. People walking out of parliament, I, can, I think there's a couple of things that you could do without walking out of parliament. Why are you walking out of parliament? I mean, you could not say anything. You could remain mute and you could be seated there because you need to conduct the people's business or represent 217,000 persons, according to the recount, would have voted for uh, the coalition. That is no ordinary amount. You need to represent those people. So as 12 parliament convenes, $11.2 billion in budget approved for the constitutional agencies. And this is very good news because uh, they have these bodies have to, to work. And the fact that they would have gotten these uh, budget approved in one day, uh, it is showing that our uh, politicians, our lawmakers are thinking in the right directions. Let us don't waste time. We're wasting too much of time. Ministry warns against the use of rapid tests for diagnosing COVID-19. 
interesting story here. I would have been receiving, and let me tell you guys, we have to go through these headlines because there's a lot of news here. Um, it is telling us what, what it is uh, that is happening with regards to this COVID-19. So the ministry came out with a statement yesterday, and the ministry would have said very, very clearly, the rapid test is not uh, uh, is such a good idea. You, the, the, the one that really tells you whether you have COVID or not, it is the one that you insert the stuff through your nose, your nostrils. And so that is the one that you should be paying attention to. If you're doing the rapid test, it's not it's not so very dependable. That's the story there. So we, I would have received some complaints. And I think the ministry, uh, the government says, has indicated that they have to, that people would have gone to some private hospitals um, and they would have indicated that they did blood tests here. I did ask this question here to the Minister of Health, um, uh, Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Frank Anthony, a couple of nights back in room 592. And he was very careful, you know, very diplomatic in his words. But he's basically saying, you know, everybody's offering tests and the, 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 the rapid tests and the blood tests and so on. Uh, but he is aware that the COVID-19, the PCR test that they call it, that you insert through your nose, that is the one that it should be depended on. So let's be very careful. We got to listen to what the authorities are saying and not just do any and everything. Uh, maybe there's something, and you need to read up on it. The story is there. I'm probably going to read it to you in a little while. Um, but let's educate ourselves. If you have to do a test, do not do a rapid test and say that you don't have COVID. You need to take precautions. Continue to wear your mask, but you need to do the correct thing. That's what the authorities are saying. I am going to listen to them. Harmon tells press he submitted evidence of relinquished dual citizenship. Clerk of the National Assembly says no. Interesting story because it would have um, been the new leader of the opposition, Joseph Harmon, yesterday, who, was, uh, who had the uh, U.S. citizenship also with the and who would have been one of the ministers resigning because of that, because of a court order that was handed on by, I think, by the Caribbean Court of Justice uh, sometime back. Uh, you remember that when uh, all that course cases was happening, he would have been one of the ministers resigning, and he, now he's the leader of the opposition. The parliament would have asked them, all members, who has dual citizenship, do not come here, um, and or at least provide proof that you have relinquished it. And he said, yes, he told me that I presented to the parliament, I've given them evidence that I have a letter or a document of revocation. Um, Parliament is saying, well, wait a minute. We didn't, I didn't, the clerk of the National Assembly says, I didn't see anything. So there's going to be some interesting developments um, um, that if they don't have that, where does that go? The only body that uh, it was disclosed that would have uh, offered a, a document stating that they have a letter of revocation or a certificate would have been gave. Shira, who is the Minister of Governance within the PVPC government. So this is an interesting story that we will continue to follow also. Guyana to account for 20% of Hess current output by 2022. Interesting story here. Hess is one of the partners in the Starbucks block out there. And Hess is going to, by 2022, 30% of this big company, this big oil company um, production, which is part of the Starbucks block, is going to be coming from Guyana. So let us be very aware of what our strengths are. When this company come and tell us how they're dependent on Guyana, then we should tell them also, we need a better deal. We are aware of what you're getting. What are we getting? So let us get this thing right. Health Ministry seeking loan from Indian Bank to revamp sections of the Demar Hospital, uh, Wisdom Hospital. And so uh, this is another story that has been working quite a few. We should not be in a situation where we are asking for loans when we have so much of money out there. Um, and it is something we should be paying attention to. Um, there's so much of uh, you guys for joining us today. Um, it has been a very good day. So far, I'm feeling a little better. There's some little remnants of a little headache. It's difficult sleeping in the night. I'm not sure whether I'm a little worried what it is, what I'm self-isolating, taking what I have to do. Uh, I'm drinking the ginger and um, the lemongrass and whatever else is mixed up into it. I um, kind of like it, kind of like it. And so um, 
that is where we are at at the moment. So, you boys in the studio, how are you guys doing there? I want to say good day to Raj. Raj has been very, you know, uh, he's been a couple minutes before. He says, are you, guys, are you ready to start the show here? You want to make sure that I get myself in order. So, good day to you, Raj. And the number that you should be getting on to us is 6222 So, we should also, you send your text to that. Do not call that number there. What you should be doing is calling 226-7453. That is the number that we want to hear from you. And we have like about an hour and a half, hour, uh, 25 minutes. And we want to take as much calls as possible. We want to have as much text coming in as possible so we could be able to read them to you and we could be able to take this to another level. But it is your day. It is time to wake up again. And we want to hear you wake up again with some of the things that you have to say today. So let's get right down into it. Rats, who do we have there today? Do we have anybody calling us today? Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're there. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Gildari. I'm very sorry you to hear about your status, COVID-19 status, and I wish you all the best. And I hope Thank you, you very much, my brother. My concern is that I talked to you last week concerning NIS. Unfortunately, yes. I, you have the lady today on your program. I was trying to, to do it this morning, but I time ran out. But I'm going to get her. I'm going to try maybe tomorrow. Or the other I, day. I, I, wish try you, to I wish if you could put me on to your report that covered the story for a gentleman that take them to court and he won this case. It was. Well, you you were interested in taking them to court too. Well, obviously, I don't want to pay a million dollar and then I have no benefits. If we can yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, if we can settle this thing on a different level, I will appreciate it. But I remember reading Kaichur News a couple of years well, ago. Well, it's the young man that take them to court. Yes, and he won the case. Yeah, it's a young man. The guy is about sixty something. <laughs> it's about sixty something. The guy he was, I think he was a mini bus driver. Well, you got to be careful uh, when you call him. Oh, but right? that, that young man there, um, that matter. It's a yeah, it's an interesting case, and I think the, it should only do better to to raise the the, the level of awareness uh, in terms of some of the rights that he has because he's not a rich guy. The guy said, "Man, I'm just tired of this nonsense every day that you know I got to be one in four from." And the people did did advise. It was an interesting case in that he did not have enough contribution to NIS, and they said for you to read those contributions, you could pay something. And when he did pay that, they didn't want to give him his money. I think that that was a, the, the 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 case that I remembered. And so he took them to court, and and um and it was big back and forth, and he won because it says the minute that you accept it, they accept the man money. It was a the presumption that he would have gotten his money, his his, his benefits. So it's an interesting case. Um, um, I'm going to try to find out who who, who did the story and who's, who was the lawyer, and maybe I can link you up with that. Okay. Should I message you on Facebook or call you back on a special number? Yeah, yeah. Message me, message me, message me on Facebook. I'm going to try to get that that details to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day, and all the best to you. God bless you. Okay. Thank you very much, dear. So I want to say thank you very much there to all the other persons who are going to be joining us today from overseas, wherever you're from, whether it's in Canada. And I'm, I, I'm seeing a good, a good set of people here too who have been with us day in, day out. Gina Singh, Bibi Shabir, who's saying, how are you guys doing? And Barkley, Ram Sohoi Tivari, you guys have been with us day in, day out and talking. Karen Josiah, uh, Josh Singh, Gail Bacchus, uh, you know, Sheikh Abraham, Sukrani Kisur, and well, of course, I did talk of it. And Nalini Singh, good day to all you guys. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, day in, day out, you made a contribution to make it into a little better place. Farida Rafi Sugbio. And so, thank you very much there. And so, maybe we could probably go to in a couple of. Um, I'm waiting to see where the text, you guys are not sending us any text. We need to see some text coming in. Six triple two. Triple two. Let's get those texts flowing so we could be able to uh, read it out what the people are saying. Uh, so, in the meantime, let's get back to some of those callers uh, that we have there. A good day down to uh, Linden uh, on the highway. We have a lot of listeners there along the Suzdike Linden Highway there as far as Haruni, a Swan. How are you guys doing there? A good day to you. Do we have a call online there, gentlemen? Yes, caller, good day, you're here. Good day, sir. How are you? 
pretty good. Pretty good. Go right ahead, yeah. man. Uh, sorry to hear about your headaches last night. I hope it gets better soon and you feel better. Yeah, I, I, I work, you know, I'm still working from home. I'm trying to take it like what it is, what it is, huh? I know, I know, I understand. Um, I have two, two contributions. One is I am really upset and shocked at the AFC's behavior. Well, the reason I'm saying that, I remember when they nominated Deborah Baca and Trotman and knocked out the PVP as opposition. How could you stand that up? That was in 2011, today? right? 2011. Yeah how, yeah, how could you stand up today and say that they broke the convention? Who broke the convention first? That's one. Two, Schumann is opposition. He is opposition. Well, that's the whole point. I don't get the point with that. And the next thing is, I'm, I know this is happening all over, but I'm living all over, living in Guyana. The issue is this. we got to start, the government has to start looking at how this country can operate in COVID, implement things that we can work because people are staying home too long. And while $25,000 sound nice, people have been home for six months and how this they go in is not another six months. So that doesn't make any sense as much as it's grateful to get it. The point is we have to start private sector government and everybody has to sit down with you and see how this country can run through COVID-19 time, meaning whatever precautions we got to do, whether it, it have to be implemented, but it cannot be shut down indefinitely because at the end of the day people most people in Guyana work day to day and they are already home a couple of months i listen to your comments up here and i hope you get better soon thank you thank you my brother dear. um well let me tell you i i to come back to that 2011 thing somebody did send it to me and i had totally forgotten that it was um that the deputy speaker the speaker's position the deputy speaker, the speaker's position had gone to Debbie back and I think Rafael Trotman as well. I remember that very, very clearly. And so it was interesting um, that, you know, that it come back. But somebody did point out that I think quite cleverly that, uh, that look, this position that you have here right now, it did, it did go to an opposition. My thought have gone to the big opposition, but it did go to an opposition. So we got to be very careful. Um, I, think, I think the opposition was just upset uh, that it did not go to them, and if if, if it's something a co coveted position within the National Assembly that you would want to see there, um, it's interesting that uh, it didn't go there. But it's also interesting that it did go to a opposition. So you, there's very little argument that you could probably be raising there. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. But to to, to come back to this twenty five thousand dollars thing that was raised um, also. Uh, where do you start? How much money do you really uh, start helping people with? Um, uh, where do you get it? It, it? It's an interesting situation. And I did put some thinking into that too. How much, what could you really help the people with to start them getting back on the jobs? Um, you can't, I think the public servants, they, they, they fortunately, they did not see the pay cut, but there's a whole bunch of other people uh, from taxi drivers, minibus drivers, people who would have lost a job in the construction industry, in the commercial sector, like the sales girls and boys and the office staff and so on. Many people would have been home um, uh, maybe on half a... Uh, I know some relatives of mine who took a 10% cut in a overseas company that is based here. Um, I even know some media houses which have been doing rotational um, kind of duties because they don't have enough jobs. Rather than send home everybody, uh, they decided to take a uh, pay cut and kept everybody uh, on things. So those were some of the ideas. But to come back, what are some of the things that we could do? What could government do other than $25,000? Could we look at a better option than that? It, it is a conversation that needs to be had. We need to bring everybody on board. I think uh, one of the good things that I saw that we're actually talking to the banks, the commercial banks and MBS and so on. So people's, um, uh, how you say it, the mortgages and the loans and so, you could give them a little timeline in which to pay, but sometime or the other, that time is gonna run out. How do we jumpstart the economy? Um, I think what we have to do, I think some of the business have to be reopened. Um, let's say for the restaurants, for example, As somebody was pointing out, you know, we're not saying for the restaurants not to be open, but do not allow anybody to be inside the building there uh, that's going to be eaten. Pick up your food and leave. 
And if you're going to come in, there can be more than three people in the building or six feet apart or whoever it is. But we have to make sure that people are protected. The business could be open, but there must be conditions that are attached. And we can look at several measures like that. But the $25,000, no kind of money, I can tell you that, but it is a start. The flip side to that, how much money is going to be good enough and where are you going to find it from? Um, somebody is going to say, well, let's take an advance of our oil money out there. I'm not so sure that that works there, but it's an idea. I saw that. So let us see how that plays out. But to come back, there's this big case here. Uh, uh, this morning, uh, the Minister of Health, Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, would have been come out or issued a statement with regards to um, to to criticisms that two member of parliament walked into parliament yesterday knowing that they had a COVID-19 and the two parliamentarians are one, um, Christopher Jones and Sharon Duncan. And they, um, I think Christopher Jones, I did see a statement from Christopher Jones. He was a former sports director um, and he is now the opposition chief whip. And so he would have said that, you know, the 10 days I, after I tested positive, the 10 days, in which the government says that I should have been out of it has elapsed and therefore I didn't see any symptoms that I could come out. But the minister is saying that um, that you, you you know, it is against the law. He came out with a statement this morning with a video statement and he's saying against the public health law to knowingly spread a, an infection, the COVID-19, he says um, uh, parliamentarians were written to or parties were written to and tell them if you have COVID, uh, uh, do not turn, turn up in Parliament, excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. If you have the COVID-19, do not turn up in Parliament. And therefore, um, you could do it virtually and be sworn in. And there was a couple of Parliamentarians who uh, were sworn in virtually yesterday. Um, Chris Jones is saying that he did not have it. The timeline would have um, elapsed. And so they're saying that you're breaching the orders. The minister is saying that you're breaching orders and that you should be there for 13 days. If you came on before 13 days, you would be breaching those orders. So this is a story that we have to pay attention to. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think this is wholly irresponsible. If you have it, um, and you've been tested positive whether it's 13 days, 14 days, if those time would have elapsed that you so many days that if you you had it 20 days back and the, the 13 days passed, then you could come out. Or if you're on the borderline of something, I think there's no need for you to be in the National Assembly. You could have stayed away. Um, so it's an interesting story there and story have more than one side and let us see where that goes. Uh, but the Minister of Health is saying that they found that um, very, very unacceptable today. Uh, as to what happened here. So let's go to some messages before we go back to those phone lines. I want to hear from our people today and I, I want to go back to that as early as possible. Um, I have some messages coming in here. Just bear with me. Let me pull it up here uh, to our people. I agree with the caller. We cannot shut down for years. The average pandemic lasts for two years. We need to make a balance in working and handling the virus. Good morning. Concerning the $25,000 uh, per household, is every house getting $25,000? And they do, uh, where people can go collect it, um, uh, or what procedures you got to go through. I don't have a rate to listen to, so you can please give me a feedback right here. Thank you very much. We don't have any details as to how this money is going to be shared out. They are coming up with those mechanisms at the moment, and I think before the week is out, the president has told Barbicians that uh, we are going to make some announcements this week here before the week is out, uh, so we could be able to keep you in tune. They're working out all those modalities, all the measures, the different measures in which people could benefit. Good afternoon, Professor Leonard and the host of the people of Guyana. The people of Guyana would like to say thanks for the thanks for the government to convene our 12th parliament. The people of Guyana extremely happy for the members of both sides to take uh, notice of what's happening. When the rain came and the dwelling was saturated with water, thanks to the great job that was completed by the Chinese for over a year, and thanks for the hard work and staff of the uh, for the hard work and the the have those who did lot nothing and received the best of the privilege. In some cases, received a better incentive than 
the short uh, management salary that needs to be investigated. I think there's so many things that points want to say here. Good afternoon, Mr. Gildari. I hope you're feeling better now. I hear that the market vendors and supermarkets are using COVID-19 to charge consumers more for the goods and products. Can the city come to do something? But everybody's having a hard time. This is happening in Barbies. And this is coming all the way from Ken from the Netherlands. Let me raise this issue here. I think almost everything people are going to complain. The housewives are going to tell you. I could tell you, uh, not as a housewife, but um, I would have received um, uh, complaints about the the goods, the um, how people paid more for chicken. Basic things like chicken gone up, meat gone up, um, basic things, potato, everything gone up. And uh, I think some vendors and everybody else they've been pushing the envelope. Some shopkeepers, some suppliers, and so really taking advantage of people. Uh, so you guys got to do a little better than that. We are going through a very hard time, and of course, of course, you can't punish people. You can't keep punishing the people as as we do that. So a good day to the good folks on in the Maikoni Creek and the Mahike area there along the east coast of Demerara, wherever you are, from Victoria. So the good people in Boxon, somebody called me this morning and said that we have a lot of people in Boxon listening to us there. A good day to you guys. How are you doing? To the good folks song and all boys song and then Tiger Bay. I want to say good day to you. You're my brothers and sisters. And I want to say good day to the good people down in Linden too. Brothers and sisters there. Kwakwani, how are you doing? Upper Barbies River there in the Upper Barbies area. I want to say good day to the people of Aituni. To the people up in Latham along the Rupin and East Savannahs, how you guys doing there? Hope you stay safe. Make sure that you protect yourself. Do not do anything that is going to endanger your government and endanger the people of Guyana. So we're going to go back to the calls right now, and we're going to come back to some more messages. Uh, uh, Rad, so we have another call today online. Hello. Good yes. Good day, caller. You're here. Good afternoon. Yes. How are good you? afternoon. Good. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you doing? You don't know who I call a lady from quarantine. How are you doing? There's a lady who invite me to come by, she? Yes. Oh, every day I try to call you and I, said, I get you pick me and now only me get you. How much stuff I forget to you? I can come, I can come. How no, I'm going to come. Somebody was reminding me about you yesterday, but, but, but the lady who called, uh, you know, she said, I got I, I to gotta make sure that I come by you. Yes, I'm gonna be so happy, and my family will be so happy. Um, All right, I want to say I'm good day. Sorry a good day you, to you guys. I'm in the quarantine. Yeah. But, but you look okay, you know. And I'm I look okay. You see me from there? Yes, I'm praying for you. Okay, and thank you very much for that. Uh, we we try to stay safe. Look, and you, want to you to stay safe too. Yeah, use your fever grass, your um, yeah. lemon, yeah. your ginger constantly. Yes, I'm using it. And use this. Um, Thank you very much, ma'am. Sour sap leaf. Sour sap leaf, that is another one. Uh, all yeah. right, I'm going to hear that. I'm going to do that. I, I hear it's very good. Yes, and you get this um, thing, you can use it too, like these um, and tulsi and so. Tulsi. Tulsi make lovely tea, the lemon. The lemongrass so as you get older you tolerate some of these things i was telling somebody i can remember the days when my mother come out and say well it's time for sanipods and salts i used to run away and hide and um, when it's time for lemongrass and tulsi i used to run away and hide but tizam and, and tulsi and so those are very uh, they make very nice tea I, I i like it now so you know as you grow older you see things differently So the, I, th I think uh, the, the lady would have gone all the way from quarantine there. I want to say thank you very much for coming in with us. It's always good to hear from our folks and, you know, uh, such positive attitude. I feel good at the end of the day. Even if I'm feeling a little dumb, even if I'm feeling a little dumb, uh, you know, you guys really boost me up. So thank you very much for that. Um, it means a whole lot, a whole, whole lot. So. Thank you very much for that. So let me read some more messages because a lot of people coming in to us here. Um, uh, uh, let me see, today. Yesterday, medical personnel here informed residents here in Vietnam that there is a positive case. However, the identity of the person remains unknown. Um, and this has caused the residents 
to panic as there's a huge concern by residents as it relates uh, to, the, to the person that they would have come in contact with. And so, yes, um, I, it's understood that this person had to travel out via speedboat, over 20 persons in that boat going and coming. Um, information was that the person could not have been contacted. We need information as people in this farming area has cold, close contact, very worrying. Um, let me say to the people of Wakenham and Leg One and Tohog Island or wherever you, you guys are joining us from, or any places in, the, in this country, as a matter of fact, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You need to take the necessary precautions. Uh, the health authorities are saying that the precautions, it's six feet apart. If you're sitting in a minibus, the minibus should have no more than seven persons in it, seven, eight persons, including the conductor and the driver. That's one. If you are out in public, wear your mask. If you have COVID and you're home and you're self-isolated, stay away from your family. These are things that are basic. So I hear you what you're saying there, Wakenham, with regards to divulging the people's name. You've got to be very, very careful with that. Um, they, there's something called client, um, patient doctor's confidentiality. And so you don't want to be talking all these things unless the family want to talk about it. It's very difficult to put it out. However, what they should be saying to you is what I'm saying to you is that you guys need to practice. If you know that you have to work in the farm, make sure that you practice staying that six feet apart, um, that you wear your mask. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as people are around, please wear your mask. And with regards to uh, them telling you the names, I don't see that happening in a hurry. Um, this is something that's very difficult. I finally get my water connected as if for the first time I had to pay the men $7,000 who did the connection, although I paid my $16,000 connection fee. Um, I think what the sports is saying there's a bribe, or if you feel like giving a post girl uh, $1,000, maybe my lunch, that's not a bribe. That's, you know, you know, you feel for them, they are doing the work hard. But if you're going to pay that post person, that post girl, a postman, to drop a mail to a house, that's right. So if you paid some G of AI workers and you happen to know them and you took the minibus number or wherever they came in front of your house with or the pickup, you should alert the G of AI folks that this is what these guys did in order for you to think it. They're not going to disconnect your water, but what they should do is make it very clear that nobody should be taking bribes. And if it is that you had to pay the seven thousand dollars for it to be connected, that is clearly a bribe. If you give them up your own meaning that, you know, I believe you did a good job, you know, buy some lunch or something, that's a different situation. Um, so let's make it very, very clear. Do not give anybody bribe. But if you're giving people, if people taking money from you for a demand of a service that they're obligated or they've been contracted to do, that is not acceptable. You need to take some evidence of it and find a way of getting it out there, whether it's the GWI, whether it's the GPL, whoever it is. Excuse me, I feel a little dry here. Good afternoon, Leonard. I'm sorry to hear about your positive results. May God grace you this time. I'm from the East Bank of Babies. My concern is that the president went to Kanji area and said that this would hamper and not stop. There's a lot of needy people in our area, pensioners, sugar workers who would have lost their jobs, single parents. The president visited the villages during the campaign. Um, so, sorry. Um, during the campaign. Um, our special one special bottom house meeting with the supporters. We are looking forward to our hampers. These two villagers are diehard PNC, so PPP supporters. He promised to visit us back when he went, so we're looking forward to his visit. And this is, of course, coming from uh, the Kanji area. Um, and hi there, good afternoon to all you wonderful people at Kaicho Radio. I'm concerned about the sketch, man. I think there's two or three people in one home. And people are turning their own pot. Are they entitled to this too? I think somebody did ask this question, yes, and I did say that. A family is a family. Meaning that if you live in a building and there's three families, meaning you and your husband and your wife, um, and you could prove that you and your husband, uh, sorry, you and your wife are there, um, and you, your mother and the father is living. I think you should have two separate them. Um, they, they talk about families here, and the family is not the people that live in the house that's considered one family. It could be a husband and a wife that's living downstairs, and another one live upstairs. So these are different families. Uh, that's just to answer your question. So when the situation comes up, 
I think they have to make it very clear that you guys got to get it. Good day to you, Mr. Gildari. I'm watching. I'm listening for my radio you now. Keep up the good job. I listen every day. Thank you very much for this um, call, a listener. Um, good afternoon, Leonard. I have a problem with gt and I'm calling them to fix my landline. It's not working over two months now. They come one time, and it's a cable problem. Now they're not doing anything. Please highlight this for me. gt and I, I think uh, I think what you need to do is go on Facebook and then probably put it on the thing. But they're not listening. Every day we're shaming them on here, and they're not listening to, to that um, uh you know, I can't understand that you're paying a service. But what I could uh, what, what I could advise you to do, the Public Utilities Commission, let me pull up that uh, that number there for you, the Public Utilities Commission. And you guys should all take this number here because the Public Utilities Commission in Guyana, they're very, very um public utilities. One second, folks, bear with me a little. I don't have any help here. Okay, the Public Utilities Commission. You guys take this number here. It's 226-7042. 226-7042. And I'm going to tell you a couple of things just now. And they're located in Queenstown, Georgetown. It's not in South Paulo, as I see they have it. They have it wrong here. It's in Queenstown, Guyana. 106 New Garden Street, Queenstown. And the number is 226 the Public Utilities Commission. And let me explain this to you. I gotta um, hydrate up a lot. I'm getting a little dry here. If you have an issue with the Ghana Water Authority, with Ghana Water Inc., the Ghana Power and Light Company, GPL, or the GTT, Ghana Telephone and Telegraph Company, and you don't like the service that they're providing to you, or they did something wrong. That number that I give to you just now, 226-7042, is a number that you should call and you could file a complaint to them. Especially but this GGP, GW, I think that the caller listener would have sent to me there a short while ago. If you pay a bribe, those are things that uh, you, you should complain to them about. If you've made a complaint about a service for a repair to a service under the laws, under the utility laws, under the agreement that gt &T has with the government, that GPL has with the government, there's certain time that they're obligated to come and fix the problem. So all of these that you should know, and the Public Utilities Commission is, is headed by no other than the chairperson, um, Ms. Dealer Britton. And Dealer has been, uh, sorry, let me don't, don't be so formal. Ms. Britton, has been a very accommodating, very approachable person. Use my name and say that Gilari would have ever referred you guys. They're very friendly folks up there. And I probably am going to bring them on someday. And maybe you could have a chat with them. They're always uh, willing to come on board. So I'm going to have one of those guys come on maybe. Sometime you can bring them. That's a good idea. I'm glad that this issue came up. We're going to bring them on and we're going to have a chat with them. So you could raise these issues and we're going to bring them on every single week so we can raise these issues and you can be able to use the public utilities commission um to to talk about these things here so let us continue um let us continue to bring our people up to date with what is happening maybe before we head back to the line let us read um a couple of um things my neighbor is taking down names persons to have the cash grant and he's putting up all his friends name on the list and other people in the community can tell me who's responsible to share out any cash grant that the president spoke about we did raise this issue yesterday we did raise this issue yesterday and it has been made clear by the authorities that every house every family in Guyana is going to benefit from the twenty five thousand. so whoever is taking name I presume it doesn't matter whether you take the name or not. As long as your family, you're going to benefit from the $25,000. We are waiting to the end of the week when they make that announcement, when they're going to start it, so people can start benefit from collect for collecting on it. Um, this is aside from any hamper or anything. We don't know of any hamper situation. I have not been told about that. Uh, I think the CDC is also looking at various communities in the internet that are benefiting from that. So we're going to continue to talk about that. Uh, with regards to, let, let's see, 
I don't agree with the caller. Uh, the country needs to be shut down completely right now since COVID-19 has spread around, but the $25,000 will help everybody for at least two weeks shut down. If not, COVID-19 will continue to spread. New York is somewhat shut down. Cases have drastically dropped in New York because of the complete shutdown. COVID-19 is not a joke. Uh, they either don't have the medical capabilities to handle a huge outbreak of this virus. Good afternoon, Leonard. I appreciated the call for chain back to 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. However, I think that the capacity of the main boss and the car should be chained back to 50%. I don't understand this. I'm not aware that the mini bosses or whatever I am gone back to full capacity. If they're doing that, take the boss number, call the police. You guys need to, to open them out. You need to say that. They're not supposed to do that. You're endangering yourself. Do not allow them to bully you. The COVID-19 situation is really getting worse. And the bosses are now carrying full, full capacity. I know a lot of people are hardworking people, simple people who don't like clashes. These minibus people and drivers. I want to say good day to the good, decent minibus people out there, as well as to the drivers of the taxis. Lots of good, decent men out there, good, decent women. You know, there are women driving minibuses too. But there are also a number of um, other folks. The other ones who are going to bully, the ones who drink the Guinness, who drink the beers, who smoke the marijuana and then decide. Like I saw a minibus on the, on, I wish I had a picture of it, I can't remember. I did share it recently. Imagine somebody is overtaken on the Harbor Bridge. A minibus is overtaken. Who owns this minibus? Is it a policeman or something? Because it's totally unacceptable. I did send it to the um, PRO of the police. Did the PR respond to it? I'm not sure. So that is not supposed to be, you're not supposed to have full minibuses. And that's totally in contradiction to what the authorities have said. Good day, my brother. I hope you get better and wish you a speedy recovery. COVID is real. People need to wake up uh, just uh, for your uh, attention. For anyone who's stuck in Canada, Repatriation flight from Toronto to Georgetown is on Saturday, September the 19th. You need to register with the consulate. I will send a photo of the information. Stay safe and God bless. Thank you very much, Zir. This appears to be somebody from Canada. And so I want to, um, you know, thank you guys very much. I'm getting a little dry here. So you guys bear with me a little. Leonard, hope you feel better, sir. Um, Naming Mr. Schumann as deputy speaker is great for Guyana. On the world stage, great technical move on uh, behalf of the government regarding the stimulus for 25,000 for each household. I hope that the government works with the local tax authority before issuing any remittances to the mass. Only poor people and working class people under $100,000 should be qualified for the stimulus. Let the government disburse these funds carefully because the people will cause more confusion. We cannot satisfy the appetite of the angry mobs. Exxon is downgraded on the Dow Jones, let the government squeeze them for 30 to 30 percent royalty on the new project. Guyana is the only country that can rise Exxon from the grave. COVID-19 was left unattended by the uh, government for the last five months. Sir, let the government test the people, otherwise we'll end up like Brazil and Peru. We do not have the infrastructure to deal with this crisis. The Cavalier lifestyle must stop, otherwise your airports will never be open to international travel. Last but not least, the opposition must not incite thugs in Guyana. If Guyana was Afrocentric based, these GCOM employees and militant uh, opposition personnel would have been on remand or sentence. I'm not sure what that means. But electoral fraud is treason. Uh, these thugs are working on the sentiments of the police force who are not acting in the interest of the people of Guyana and the stability of the government. Read between the lines. May Allah bless the leadership of the beautiful country. Thank you very much there uh, for a very concise and very uh, several issues here. Um, good afternoon, good evening, Gildari. You get in diarrhea, you should drink, I know I'm not getting diarrhea. You should drink one teaspoon of casserole. I let me live for seven days. And lemongrass, tea, plenty, vitamins. I think I had it when I was in the US. Long, long. I got two COVID tests before I came. My, my name is Abdul Haq. Thank you very much, Abdul. I have so many things to highlight, but I'm not getting through to the program. In the Lenora on Saturdays, many of the people don't wear masks, although the market is in a bad condition when it rains. Yes. Thank you very much. A lady did call me on this. And the lady says, 
people, they are, whenever they are market, they are people who are blocking up the bridge and they are bullying the vendors in the market. People now wear masks and, you know, it is very, very tough. And I, I, I don't know who's in charge. The NDC, where's the NDC? Where's the, the, the regional authorities when it comes to the people, the protection of the people? Where the market, uh, uh, I think, constables, you guys need to do a little better than this. You need to monitor the people complaining. You cannot have your, your job and you not do it. You need to carry out your mandate. So I want to say to you guys over in the west coast of Demerara there, on the Lenore area, that you should know that uh, we are paying attention. We are going to call them out whenever we hear cases like this. So let's get back to the studio there. Raj, do we have any call? We want to hear from our people today, man. Where are they? Do we have Hello, any of them afternoon. online there? Good afternoon. How are you doing, ma'am? Good afternoon, Leonard. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good afternoon. Okay, okay. Um, there's a lady from Zealot calling you back about this, the, the, the ministers of actor when they're working. Housing. Yes, they, they 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 are they are the Ministry of Housing. You know what? Um, let me see if I could pull it up. I think they would have. Um, I'm gonna ask what you could do. Send me a text of six triple two triple two. I'm gonna ask the Ministry no, when it is that they have text. the open day. I can't do text. I have a smartphone and I can't text. No, you can text them through the norm. Oh, you know, you, okay, the, the small phone can do text, but I hear you. Um, I could give you my number if you want, but um, is the transport are talking about? Oh, but the girl have the transport. Yeah, it's a transport, yes. Right? That's how I want to read the minute. Right, right. I, know, I think they're now going to. Right, right, right. All right, here what we're going to do. Here what we're going to do. You're going to call the switchboard, my switchboard at the workplace here, 2258491. Okay, let why bring the pen and the arm people there. Just a Leonard. Two two five eight four nine one. Give yes. Two two. Call it back again. Two two five eight four. Two two five eight four nine one. Two two five eight. Yeah. Two two five eight four nine one. Yeah. Two two five eight. Eight four nine one. How much? Yeah. You talk to the security there and tell them eight four nine one. Four nine one. Yeah. You got it? Yes. You talk to the security there, tell them, give me that uh, number there, the lady from Zila, and I'm, I'm going to get you the information. Okay. Um, call two, back to five, two to five. Two to five. Two to five. Eight, four, nine, one. Two to five, eight, four, nine, one. Yeah. Leonard, I have something yes, to ask you. Are you okay? You feel okay? I'm feeling okay, a little dry and dehydrated right now, but I, I am getting I'm there. Okay. Um um I telling you, as I telling you, right? And my husband and me I we, we done ageable already. I'm sixty over sixty, right? And my husband is sixty one. And um I ain't get my transport as yet a one, there's one. And then again my husband not working and I'm not a healthy person. Understand? When I'm telling you this this time here now they say sixty five you get pension, right? But uh, what I'm saying uh -huh. by the time you reach sixty five you die. You ain't get nothing. I know, I know. Yeah, I, know. I hear what you're saying. And you know yeah. and you know we could do somewhat better if you get our oil oil act together, meaning yes, we should benefit from the oil. Everybody could yes, benefit. We gotta fight, we are really gotta fight for it, man. Yeah, because I understand they're pushing you out of a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, we gotta fight it. We gotta fight it. It's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, I know. Um, a lot yeah, of people complaining. Right. Yeah, I know. People sure. really get it hard, you know. A lot. You, you know who I'm sorry yeah. for? Yeah. The citizens are really suffering in this country. Yeah. If you hear the amount of calls, some day, yeah. some day I'm depressed because you you would hear the people calling you and what they yeah. complaining. They complaining, yeah. you know. The things are hard. People are really hard. People are struggling. A man yeah. tell me that they they. You did, they, he has a shop, and when he see people coming and buy the kind of things that they buy, one egg, one ten, it's all to be back yeah, to those days. Totally not. That's true going on. And then again, the shop people ain't got to think the price high, 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 Leonard. The things them in the shop is really high when you go and buy some things. It's really a high price. Yeah, because the grocery prices, everything has gone up. So we got to understand, people are really suffering. People are really suffering here yeah. now. Chicken prices, everything gone up. Yeah, 
Uh, imagine now you used to buy a tin of can for one, 20 and them thing. Now you know how much a tin of can? Two how much is that? 260. This uh, wow. is like spray, right? This is like sauce spray. I just buy it, right? You know how much you want it? 2,000 something now. What? 2,000 yeah. like spray? Uh, yeah, it's showing you to this to that store when you go in and buy a little ration, you're got uh, these things and stuff. And I, you know what to say, by because at present my husband at work, I find it hard. I'm not a healthy person, and I know if we are could see. And then me getting me transport a one. I know what more to do. We got this girl right at at Alfred in Hope Dale, Miss Means. Miss Means, I think she name right. She have the transport mm. and she ain't doing nothing with it. Yeah, because the entire court system and everything, everything is really held up. Let me tell you this, don't underestimate this damage to this country that would have yeah. been done because of this last five months when that we were held up because of this election. We had a double whammy. We had the elections on one hand, we had COVID on the other hand, and it was really, really, it was really hurt our people. On the other side, we had some idiots, and let me, I, I, I am not apologizing for this. We had some uh -huh. idiots who was pushing this race issue yeah. and really divided our people. I yeah. never ever forgive them for that. Uh, it is sad what they did to us. One thing I had some people come and share some things in this place here, and they choose and, 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 and give them, pick and choose and give these things, and then I share to every house. You understand? I, I hear your sister. Yeah, so you can call, you can call the number there, leave your number, and I'm going to give you a call back. Because I'm going to oh. try to get when is the days that you could probably go in and meet the minister. Okay. I've spoken to Ms. Minister Colin Kroll. I've huh. spoken to Minister Colin Kroll. And he uh, we had an interview with him a couple of days back. And he's a very approachable person. Um, yeah. He did say because of his open door policy that he's been so overwhelmed. And, you know, when you have a minister, the only thing, that, in addition to meeting with the people, you've got so many other things that you're doing. But yeah. at the end of the day, they they there to serve the people. So they have yeah, to serve the people. They've been yeah, elected. Man, I'm, glad how these, so I'm, glad these, I'm glad all these ministers are moving. They're working a lot. And then again, the two will get the COVID. I'm really sorry for them too, right? Because they go for help the COVID-19 and look up on. You understand? And we got to keep looking yeah, at Yeah, it is. We, we, we got to be careful. You see, you yeah. see the worry something is, is not the people. I'm a little, I, I would say that I'm relatively young, relatively healthy or so. But you still you feel uncomfortable, like I'm sitting here. Leonard? Yeah. Leonard, yeah, you I, I, sick when yes. you got it? You feel sick? No, I haven't. I'm positive for it. I'm positive. I'm tested positive. I'm operating from home right now, in fact. Okay. Um, you, you need my number? No, you're going to call the work. Please give them the number and I'm going to get it from them. Go, okay, okay. All right, then. Thank you very much. And see you. Me and hang in there. Don't give up, man. Don't give up. As I say to everybody else, we nah. have life in the air. And so, you know, as long as we have life, there's hope, right? All right. So the sister's gone. They're all the way from Zila. She's been calling and she's been with us from day, day one. Also complaining. And she has an issue there. And we use this program here, this program is going to um, give the people a voice, maybe a way of uh, bringing some resolution to some of the issues that we have. Even though, though we can't solve everything here, maybe we could come up with some ideas. Like I saw some people personally saying that, you know, one of the license tin is $5,000. $5,000, I'm not sure whether it's $5,000 or so license. Who buys? I mean, I mean, if you, you, you're not working a lot of money, how do you buy that? So, you know, you got, you got to use some other alternatives. It's not fancy things that it's going to work. Maybe one of these days we could probably talk alternatives to the big expensive stuff that we could use. Instead of buying potato, can we use Edo? A lot of people are going to get upset with me, including my kids. They, they don't like Edo. They like potato. And so I have an issue because I grew up on Edo. And Edo is very good, I believe. I think it's far better than a lot of the drum provisions. It's good for your, for your blood. Uh, it tastes great. It makes a nice choker. Who knows about put the um, edo choker? If you don't know, you should try it. Um, but um, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have to be starting to look at alternatives how we could uplift this country. 
uh, in in other way look look at how we could reduce our food bill see whether we could uh, raise you know or at least grow some of these food right there i was up in borbis and I, I i think they were looking at some alternatives a man is planting corn people are planting corn up there um people planted so many things up there we should uh, start fl- planting i think they were experimenting with the cauliflowers and the broccoli and so on these are things that has to be done right the carrots right here we need to do it and we don't need to bring in anything like into the country if we could find a way of doing apples and those kind of things so let's do it here yes we could do it they've been experimenting about, uh, with that uh, soil soil is a big thing in brazil we have lots of lands here. They've been looking to expand themselves into the air. Many opportunities. So let us know. Um, so if you guys don't know, like Pam Singh says, she knows about uh, Edo Choco. So Pam, it is a, I, I think it's a nice thing. Uh, I think you can make some nice cream cream Edo with, um, uh, you could throw in some nice, and I'm not sure where you could throw it, but I like it with butter and things like that. If you can mash Edo tastes really really nice so we have some good things right in this beautiful country of ours rats i've been keeping somebody on the line or off the line there for a long time could you find out if they want to talk to us yes could they call you on the line good afternoon y- yes good afternoon how are you doing ma'am i'm fine thank you i'm called for, for um tell you that um, we're glad to hear your voice and you are not just giving up because you have this coronavirus. And I wish you all the best to get well. Yes, I'm praying for you too. I, I, I don't like being locked up. You know, it's like being locked up. Let me tell you about that. Uh, I'm not, I haven't been to pass the gate since Tuesday because I am in a lockdown mode. It's not a good thing. Okay, well, I know that you, you, you missed the studio also. But we thank you that we still have you to yes, your yes. area of life. And take care of yourself. Thank and you your very family. much. So where are you calling from? I'm uh, calling from Farm. Where are you calling East from? Bank. I call it from the Farm and East Bank. Where, where, where are you calling from? Farm and East. Bank. Okay, Farm and East Bank. Uh, thank you. Okay, how was the day? I hear there were some crimes in that area. Has uh, it eased up or what's happening? We ain't get you. I said we would have received a lot of complaints about uh, uh, oh, uh, a lot of have... crimes in that area. This area here is, is still. It's still busy with that what you call talking there and many people are still partying at this time. Right now we have a lot of music back of us here and they are still sporting and they are not wearing their masks. And with a, and then we have another problem in the area. People are we wise we are struggling to pay our bill at this time. People are getting free water. And free light at the area. They are happy people because they don't have to pay any bills. What do you mean free water? Like explain that to me. The thiefing? Exactly. <laughs> if you come by the Kokotai, you see a big post or light post there, you must have a fatty wire and they tie up. And then the Oh, that, I, I'm glad, right. Yeah, I'm glad that you, you, you remind me of that. I got to remind those people, you know, these are not things that is right. And and I, I presume that they have light and water run to the place and yet people stealing. There are people, and the people who live at the city fans, uh, these people at the city oh. fans, they are the happiest people. They don't have to pay for water. They don't. They just hook up the wire up on the post and they get wire, water, current. The city fans people, those are the Venezuelans you talk about, or those are Guyanese living there? Yeah, for right, good Guyanese, and you have Venezuelans now too. They are the happiest oh people. And then they have a lot of legal board. Wow. This contract All right. them where I work at the, at the water place. They are taking All money right. from the people and give them a legal bull. Uh, so who water is cut enough? For three years now, four years now, them the same um, um, contractor and cut what they have the cut water. The same contractor they come back uh. on Sunday or on holiday with a car and put on back take a, a small piece. Uh, they come back and put on back the water for the people. And so right now, if so, the text right, and I, if that, the text that's how it pass, the computer, eh? they, they, they take the text pass. Well, if the text check in the computer right, for right. two, three years, you will see the people who money, but they get, they are not connected back them pipe, but they still get water in the house. Uh, lots of people. So the question is asking, 
GW, I should have known because if these people are not connected, back where they get in water from, right? They should be investigated. Yeah, they should have a, a somebody to investigate that and go and check the pipe see they're getting water. Because you're supposed to, uh, if you got that from for three years, you're supposed to know. You're supposed to be checking uh, where you get water from. So for the last three years, what did you do? I mean, these are things I don't have to tell you to do that, but I hear from what you say there. Okay, sister, thank you very much. All the way from Farm on the East Bank of Demerara. Beautiful place. So thank you very much there to the sister telling us there about what is happening on the Sea Dam area or what we know as a river dam. <coughs> Excuse me. You guys got a beer, I'm feeling it dry here. Um, so let's read a couple of the texts that's been coming in. Um, my my dear friend, and he's saying that uh, uh, Leonard, listen to your callers. I live in Guyana for the last four years since I left. I cannot return because of the COVID. Let me be honest and let my people know. If I do not assimilate and hard work towards a goal in the Western world today because of COVID-19, I would have had to beg in the streets of New York and bring tears to my, my eyes to see people on their knees because of this crisis. And remember the eighth the day strike in the 1962. But I never thought these days would return to Guyana. Boss, Guyana is my home. I've always said that when I retire now, that I'm 65, I'd return home, I live comfortably. I've made arrangements to give away all of my retirement benefits to my people in Guyana. What can I, uh, what can I do now? It has no value. COVID has dominated the world. For a while. Can you imagine the pressure of our government uh, uh, will be under to deliver? And you're so right. Um, I think we were going merrily on the way. Some people look at the COVID as maybe a blessing in disguise for some, because had we not had the COVID, maybe we'd have lost the entire game and with the way things were going, with the way things were being sold out and everything else. And that's a reality. You make no, 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 no. Um, Apologies for saying that. People would have been complaining about a lot of things that were going wrong. It put a halt and everything. But on the flip side of that, there was some collateral damage, meaning there were people who were heavily impacted and people who lost their jobs right away. And if you see people not coming out because people are ashamed, maybe people have their pride, they don't want to come out and say how bad it is that they're suffering, but they owe the banks. They're not buying like how they used to buy before. Uh, they, they, they're not buying the clothes, they can't go to a party. So there's a lot of things that this whole, this entire situation here, a pandemic has taught us some lessons that is very, very harsh. But we have started to appreciate, um, I have started to appreciate some of the things that are natural to Guyana, uh, about our uh, provisions, about um, so many things that we have right here in this country that I, I appreciate that. So, but it has also brought out some ugliness, some things that I would not have liked to see that I, I had some friends call me, people who are suffering and they want help and, and they're not afraid to ask, but there are many Guyanese who are really, really suffering also and they're not asking and they're suffering silently. So it's not an easy situation for a lot of people. Um, I hope that maybe we could get, get this over with so we could go back to normalcy. I don't see it happening within the next six months based on the figures that we've seen here. You hear the lady from farm calling just now, and the lady is saying, people sporting, people teeping, you like city people teeping water, like when it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like there's no tomorrow. People now wearing a mask. What is the need? We're the people who have, who have brains to be able to tell these people here that, you know, what you're doing is wrong. We're the neighbors, like people don't advise the neighbors or anything, or it's not in my business, they're living over there. Um, let them do what they want to do. That's our attitude. We have to start doing things a little differently. Let's open our mouths. Because when they do things like that, it affects us. The longer the borders are going to take to open, the longer we, it's going to be that we come back to some level of normalcy. I also wish to highlight something about our teenagers in school time from Perico all the way to Georgia. These children would go on the road doing all sorts of ridiculous things we see. Traffic officers in the morning, why not in the morning parents uh, need to get out and need to get more involved with the children's lives. Uh, maybe the ministry needed to put uh, measures in place when school reopened. Yes, I could remember 
somebody complaining. That they get some not working uh, teenagers and some young boys. Um, they would be hanging around the corners when the little girls go to school. Some teenagers, girls, girls barely out of the 12 and 13 and so. And the little girls and the trouble in the little girls. And it is a big gang up there. And sometimes they rob some of the people. This is what has happened. It happens in Diamond there. Fortunately, some of the police would be coming out and chase them. But the police can't be there 24-7. Uh, the, it is a big issue that we have that if you're not paying attention to what your kids are doing, and probably I'm going to tell you a little story sometime or the other about TikTok, about Instagram, sometime or the other, and about how kids, you need to monitor what is happening, or else you could have a situation right on the you know that it's happening, and you weren't aware. It's very easy that somebody is online with the little kids, and they are talking to somebody who may or may not be a pedophile or somebody who's a, a, just out to kicks. And they, you know, the torn and the twist the little kids, uh, the little children, and they don't know better and, and, and things can happen. So you need to pay attention, you need to monitor, we need to do what is the correct thing, what parents do. So there's so many things that uh, we need to know. I know my little daughter is gonna not uh, like what I have to say, but it is what it is. Um, the system at CHMP is not working, but I need to sell my house here in Richmond Hill and come home and build my house and die in peace and drink more. Uh, it was JWB. It does look like JWB with coconut water with lead. I think this looks like Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker Black. Man, how could I miss this? I got to be a little old. So the guy wanted to come back here and, and settle along and he wanted to drink Johnny Walker Black with with coconut water with Glenn. I think Glenn don't drink Johnny Walker anymore. Maybe he does it once in a while. What he does, what he does drink is um, he like vodka, like absolute. So if you listen, Mr. Lal, somebody knows that you like Johnny Walker. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, Leonard, you sound a little more congested today than he has. You keep on drinking warm fluids, feel better today. Praying for your speedy recovery. Yeah, I'm not feeling that very well. I feel my nose a little, um, and I feel a little heavy coming back. I don't have a diary, you know, but thank you very much for that. Raj, Joshua, could you go back to the lines? Let's hear from our people. What are they doing? I want to hear from them. All what right, are you guys afternoon. doing? You know, why you give me Hi, advice, good man. afternoon. You are here. Go ahead. Yeah, why give me advice? So I got a minibus, right? And I pay 15,000. Yes, sir. Me minibus in private. I pay 15,000 revenue every, yes. every time I go renew. Yes, sir. Yeah. How much about supposed to be? How much is supposed to be? This has to be, 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 be four thousand, past four thousand. Because I have, I, I got another mini bus. I paid three thousand something. Um, did you raise the issue with them? Two different mini bus. Did you raise the issue with them? I got all the documents. Yeah, but, but why? It, uh, what are the numbers? The the. the the number four. Oh, okay, but that's strange. So did you raise that issue with, with is it a BBP number or a PVP number? What is it? It been in B and I changed from B to P. From B to P, I use a different So both of them are in P at the moment? May I hear you? And both of them are in P at the moment? Both of them are in P at the moment? Both in P, yeah. I just said what's up on your phone there. A couple of them are morning come back. Oh, my apologies. There's so many that are just coming in. Well, let me tell you what you could do. Um, when you're going back to GR, because GR is the one who is, is charging for those revenue license. You need to stop and you need to see the manager and you need to raise the issue. I've been to the store three, but three Did you do? And the supervisor tell me, go down. So when I go to down, so the cashier, the cashier tell me, you got to pay that. You got to pay it. She started roll with me. And I had to pay the 15,000. I got all the documents. Um, that's strange. Uh, yeah. Could you do me a favor? Sure could you do me a favor? You say, how you pay so much? You like, you got a truck. No, I got a minibus. Private, I got a minibus. See, I don't pay three times. Uh, three times, you pay 15,000. Uh, hey, what are you going to do for me? See if you can take out some pictures of the minibus. Um, the, what do you call it? The, um, uh -huh. the, the the documents and yeah. send it to me and i would yeah. send it to mr station 
Okay. Could you WhatsApp it to me or something? Yeah. Yeah. I send about it. Ready for you. Yeah. Very very efficient. All right. It may, may, yeah. Right. Send it back to me, and then let me let me send it to Mr. Station. Maybe you can probably send me with your number and everything to, to, to my okay. private thing, and we're gonna take it. Okay. I thought I, I tried a long time to get to you, man. Long time. Yeah. My apologies, man. We tried to work on the program. We 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 gonna yeah. get we gonna get better. We improving it. So when things yeah. are back to normal, we gonna we know, open man. the we lights. Know, we know yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay. Then. Yeah, my brother. God bless. Bye bye. All right. So uh, we are gonna try to think. This is um, okay. My husband worked seventeen years in Guyana. I want. Let me see. This is okay. We'd like to know if you could please look into that. We traveled to an 18 of flight Jamaica got stranded and had to book a next flight out. Now, they did not give us any answers about our money. Yes, I could answer you right there. Um, you could talk to the consumers. Um, let me tell you how you can get that. It's the consumers. One second, the consumers, um body that is in supply there they have been taking some consumers of fears consumers okay here here it is you could go to facebook if you have um, that call a listener you could go to facebook and there's a body called the consumers they had a competition and consumer affairs commission it's being headed by a lady called uh, dawn um I forget what, what what the name is but it's been uh, headed by that lady. But the con con Guyana Competition and Consumer Affairs co Commission, and it said located in the supplier. And you could uh, go on the Facebook and get onto them, and maybe you could raise an issue. They were looking into the flight to make an issue there and who they would have uh, uh, had money for. And uh, you could probably see whether you could raise that issue and see whether you could get back your money. Um, so that is what I could say to you at the moment with regards to that. Let's come back to some other messages. Do we have other messages here? Um, uh, Leonard, listen to your call. As I live again for the last four years, since I left, I cannot re return because of the COVID. Let me be honest and let my people know. Okay, well, I think this is the same one. Um, I don't think we have any more messages. We would have read everything there um, that was sent to me. But uh, let's go back to the lines. Right, so we have any other callers that we want to hear from the people. It is the Wake Up Day and Show here on Kaicho Radio 99.9, 99.1, 99.5 FM. We're coming to you, Kaicho Radio as well, and Facebook and Kaicho Radio live stream on YouTube. Let's get back to the lines. We want to hear from our people. Good afternoon, calling you on the air. Yeah, good afternoon, Leonard. Hope you feel yes. well soon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I heard the lady was calling. Yes, I about, hope so too. Thank uh, you. Her water being cut off for three years. Man, this is funny. Even before the um, it was water rates were moved from MNCC to Guyway itself. The lines in my yard were cut off, and holy, I get bills every month from GP from Guyway for these things. There is no water. <laughs> in the yeah, yard. that's an interesting one. And I'm getting bills every month. Every single month. I'm you got a PUC bills. number there, right? 226-7042. Raise the issue with them and let it let Yes, it yes, I'll have to do that because I keep getting bills all the time. And there's no water lines to the yard. Where right, 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 right. And so the, I have no idea. What I think they're in a mess. And they're they might, in a mess. And let me tell you this. They have to be because my they put in, I paid right. for the whole year for my mother, and the bills keep coming up to now with no deduction on them. So I, I find right, 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 very, right. very weird. I pay for a whole year, and the bills here every month, $2,000, every single month. That is no not, that's not supposed bills. to be that. You need, you need to have that rectified. Call the PUC, 226 Tell them that I say let them look into this matter here and try to get it fixed for you. <laughs> okay then, thanks man. I hope you get well soon. Yeah, thank you very because much, Jay let, let, let me say this because this matter has been coming up. And up. When you see people stealing current, when you see people stealing water, when you see people, when you see that you're paying a high bill to the uh, Guyana Water Inc., to the GPL and to gt &T, it is because a couple of people are getting free service. And if you know people get a free service and you're paying for them, why are you sitting on your hands? 
you need to say something, you need to call them in and you need to report the matter. We need to stop this. There's an entire community uh, that is located in South Georgetown area. On the East Coast, places on the East Coast, where GPL for a long time couldn't go in because the people there, when they go in, people run them out. People even bought up to minibuses because I think it was where. Was it in one of the East Coast villages? GWA minibus went into that area there. And they lit the fire. That is how bad we've become that we want to steal electricity. There was a time when went so fire. You couldn't walk and you would hear from time to time people being um, electrocuted because you had wires taken out of every other house that you could think about running across the grass to an area to a pole that is located nearby. That's because it's become a culture that we steal if you don't have electricity. Even if you have electricity, we continue to steal. So Peter Paper Paul, you and I who pay normally, we pay for everybody who's stealing. And in addition to that, uh, the feedback uh, could have some effects on the actual circuit in itself uh, by having in those illegal connections because you can have wires arcing and so on. Former GPL CEO uh, by the India would explain to you how some of these uh, technical situation could have an impact on our reliable, reliable uh, uh, supply of electricity. So that's where it's at. So I want to say a good day to you. Uh, we have you join us from the good day to the people right across to uh, from the good United States of America, uh, from Canada, from Europe. Thank you very much there all the way. Uh, I think Ken, a good day to you, Ken, always with us. I hope when you, you in Guyana that you come visit me. And whenever you guys in Guyana, come visit. Give us a call. Let us know what you, you guys are doing. Um, things are going to... Um, eventually ease up for people it's not gonna last forever uh i think i would have read a book on literature i think was it maroon five no not maroon uh, maroon it was about the maroons in jamaica and uh, it says god doesn't give you more than you can bear and i want to bring that to you that you know we might see ourselves if you believe in god or there's an almighty or something that you believe in and uh, that there is these little situations, I say little, don't be a strong people. We've been through so many things in the past. We're going to rise from this and we're going to rise in a very good way. I'm very confident in that. And it's going to make us stronger what we go through here because our people, they're very, very tough people. Um, they're strong people too. So we're going to become even stronger, and which is a good thing for this country. So let us bear, bear up a little. Let us hang in there. Let us try to protect ourselves and let the authorities do their work in terms of ensuring that it manages right through this entire period. Uh, I want you to protect yourself. Wear your mask, ensure that you're not wrong. Don't go to any party. Do not go to any bottom house party or any backyard party. If you hear anything like that, tell them, no, no, come and send the food. Send the drinks over to my house. I'm going to party right home. You need to protect yourself. Do not uh, endanger your life. Do not do anything that is going to put you out there. Um, uh, it is not an easy thing with COVID and a lot of people who are suffering. So I want to go back to the lines and hear from Raj. Raj, do we have another caller there? Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're there? Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon. How are you doing? You sound very good. Yeah, Mr. Gildari. Yes, it is. And you are the air. Go ahead. What do you have to say to us today? Yeah, um, I'm calling from Essequibo. Yes. Um, you know, we're in the pandemic right now. So we have a problem in Essequibo once again. What's the problem? Well, you know, the sanitary coming wrong, right? And they are telling yes. us, which is that wrong, they say that we have to get, you know, these things where you've got to put on your forehead to see the, the, the temperature gauge? Yes. They are telling us that we have to get it at the mandir or the church or the masjid, which is good. But what oh. we've seen is that they said before you go to the mandir church that you have to do this temperature check. Now we look around for buy one because we are going to the masjid or the mandir. But what we find, see now that the people in the pharmacy, especially the pharmacy in Essequibo, they're selling one of these things for $20,000. Yes. 
So well, I don't understand what. But, but before that, I don't understand that you're being forced to buy a temperature. A temperature yeah, yeah, the sanitary, I, the, sure. sanitary, the sanitary tell us that, that if we don't have that, we cannot keep no service at the Bandir or the Masjid. The sanitary tell us that in the... No, system. no, but what I'm saying, but they're also saying that you should have one at home too? No, not home. You have to have it at the Masjid or the Mandir when you go to pray. Okay. You must have a temperature there, uh -huh. right? Uh-huh. But when we find out so, so you complaining what you complaining about the price for these machines? Yeah, because the people them are selling for twenty thousand dollars for one in the pharmacy. So I was wondering for know if that is the exact yes. price for one. No, I'm not sure. I think it was just over about eight, nine thousand dollars. But a lot of people, like I'm saying, a lot of people including the supermarkets and everybody, uh, you know, they they, they really this is not a good term to use, but they have the they, they put on the backs of the guys or the neck of the guy these people by yeah, but, by but you know Mr. demanding Gildari, these extraordinary price. Why they're selling you one of these things for twenty thousand and eighteen thousand dollars a one? But what a fine see that and even though they are telling sanitary are telling us that we have to get at the Monday or the Masjid was to keep it so they're not telling the restaurant and the and the bars them that the barman is not testing the people there when they go to drink. But people are sitting in the bar still. But well, I don't think the sanitary visit the restaurant. Right, the right, right, right. And and you know that's one of the problems that we have. There's not an the even handed thing. You know, in America, in America, they're so tough uh, with, with, with things that happen there. If they come in, if you build it in a store, if they pass and see you doing any construction, the first thing that they ask you for, do you have a permit for that, sir? And if you don't have a permit, you shut down. I happen to know that that happens all the time. That's because you have exports, uh, technical people who are there doing the job, and it doesn't matter what you what you're doing. Well, as long as you don't have the permits or you don't have the papers, they're not going to give you any kind of leeway. And again, yeah, what we have is a bunch of people. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Yeah, Mr. Gildari, why are you seeing that some people are, are 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 glad that they have the pandemic because they could bring in this thing and put the price what they want because of feel that you have to get it. Right, they right, right. Understand. You can understand that temporary right, right. is selling it for eighteen thousand dollars in Mexico. Wow, and I think that's a shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. And it's not only that; it's all over the country. People are really, you know, yeah. you know, they, so they really I set up the price. And I can tell you about the, the price of. Five, I hear some woman say some spray selling for five thousand dollars because once you have to get these things, the people are not putting down price on it. And I mean, this, this is expensive, no, Mr. I think this is unfair for the people there. People are not helping out with the pandemic. I agree with you. With the pandemic. I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, people people are taking advantage. People are not helping out with the pandemic. People are killing you with the pandemic more because once they have to get this thing, the price suddenly jump up. And this is what they're doing. The supermarket and the pharmacy in the are selling it for that price. $18,000 for a temperature. You can imagine that. I hear you, brother. We gotta keep calling them out because I'm gonna try to find out what the price of one of those. Yeah, things. thank you, Mr. Gillard. But I definitely believe it should be eighteen. It should not be eighteen or twenty thousand. That's so much, man. Thank you. God bless you. And so that is uh, the the recurring story that you'll hear. And people taking advantage during this uh, pandemic time to make a lot of money. Pharmacies. You guys gotta be a little more. Um, human than that it's not good people have been complaining so i want to say good day this is a wake up day and show you guys have been waking me up not feeling so well but um you guys have really pushed me to take it to the next level and we coming to you on kite show radio 99.1 99.5 want to say good day to my folks down there at kite show news all the reporters mr glenn lyle how are you guys doing the editor charmian how are you guys doing and so, of course, down in our radio, Raj and Joshua has been manning things, keeping things alive there. Thank you very much for that. And of course, to all our people who've been joining us right across our three counties, I want to say good day to the Barbies people, to the Port Moran people. How are you guys doing? Rosa Market, how are you guys doing? I want to say good day to the sugar workers. I know you guys have been putting up with a lot of things. You guys have suffered. Um, it is let's see how that goes uh, there have been some promises with the sugar industry let us uh, uh, let us see you guys gonna hang in there and you know don't give up do not give up 
And when it comes to the Eskimo people, I want to say good day to you. You guys got to do what's correcting. You know what's correcting? Let us don't do anything that is wrong. Keep safe on the road. Uh, uh, continue to protect yourself. Continue to protect your family. Uh, you know, don't do not break the laws. Uh, do not you know do not do anything that is gonna put our people in danger. So let me see if there's other. I think I mean send some other uh, other messages. Hey, good afternoon. Always listen to the program. I have one problem. Let me see. I agree with the caller. We cannot shut down for years. The average pandemic lasts two years. We need to make a balance in work and handling the virus. Um, this is, hi, good afternoon. Always listen to a program. Very interesting. I, need, I have a problem with my water meter. It's not working. GWI is charging me $3,920 every month. The problem is that we don't even use the water. I went to them and they say they can't do anything. I'm living in their escape course. Uh, this problem should be brought to the attention of the PUC. You guys, two to six, seven to four, to call them and let them take your, your um, information there. Um, I was made to understand, good afternoon, Leonard. I was made to understand that the NDC is responsible for identifying who should be given the $25,000 COVID relief. I'm very sure there's big room for corruption here. Point is that the vouchers, the counselors, will make sure that the friends and family benefit from the same. Don't think that this is the correct way to go. I'm not sure if they, they, they continue on that angle. There were some people who were um, going around taking names, but this new information that we have here now, I think at the end of the week, let's wait and see, because we are going to raise those issues with them. Which families are going to benefit? And you cannot have, if you have a daughter that's living with a mother and father, you cannot have that daughter being classified herself as a family. That daughter is part of the family. But if there's a husband or wife that live downstairs of a family or they live in another part of the house, there's a possibility, but the authorities would have to verify that. So you'd have to prove that you know you have your wife and you know, uh, let's see how that goes. So we are gonna continue to pay attention to that. Um, in the meantime, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, I'm concerned about the reopening of the airport where we have our families that want to come. Some people have their husband, wife, and kids that are stuck and want to come back to spend time and they're delaying every month. People cannot afford an Eastern airline flight and they're not allowing any commercial flight. Yes, this is an issue here with the flights. The authorities do not have any, uh, we don't have the resources to, uh, to monitor what is happening in this country here. Uh, when you allow these people to come, in addition to monitoring the persons who come in here, we have the hospital systems that is um, that is old, that is flooded, that is flooded with people. We don't have enough uh, space, enough beds to cater for people. We have people being asked to stay home. People who are COVID nineteen uh, positive being asked to stay home and to 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 you know to monitor themselves, and the authority will try to monitor them. So. We have to uh, we have to be cognizant of that. When when you open the airport, who's gonna monitor these people here? So um, you guys take care and just make sure that you protect yourself. Raj, do we have another call? Let's make sure that we have our callers can continue to come in. We wanna hear from our people today? Caller, you on the line? Go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you doing? Hey, Leonard. Good afternoon, buddy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How There's are you doing? No problem with the NIS man. Yeah. What happened to the NIS? Yeah. Make your accident 1987, the 5th of September accident, right? We start work back yes. 11th of June 1988. From 88 to 89, non record and approved for my um, contribution. I worked 28 years with them. Where were you working? Guys, you could blame on their street. Yeah, me, Blame the state. Yeah, boy. And when you went to NIS, what is that? Then give me one set of things here where the contribution fixed that, but then they give me for that two years. Now 1990, then give me seven. 1993, then give me nine. And now regular workers. And they get paid out the, um, the fifth of uh, um, 2005, they get paid out, right? Good. Uh -huh. Before that, we uh, had one problem with them, but when we lost this thing on our rent house and this other day, the man find them and they bring them to me. This thing happened since 87 to 88, uh -huh. right? 
Me get, you know how much, you can tell me how much patients you got to get from medical, NIS, before you get a permanent P from them, how much patient like? Do you get any idea? Um, I have no idea. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring back the, the lady there. Let me hear that. What you could do. Oh, man. Um, yeah. And you reach what age now? What age you carry now? I'm just 63, nobody. I know me and I, same thing now. I'll run up here, man. And me not get me full contribution. I'm supposed to get. And you pass 750 contribution. Pardon me, what? You pass a 750 contribution? Did you pass that? Yes, we get 28 contribution here. 20, um, 26 and 2 years now, fine. Then give me 1,000. Okay, okay. 1,061 contribution for 28 years, 26. And then we now find 2. And which 1990, then give me wow. 2. 1993, then give me. But you receive it, you receive it something now? Yeah, and I get to benefit from anybody the contribution and right board. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you got to continue. Um, you got to continue to appeal it to them and let them fix that. And I presume as soon as they get that fixed, um, you know much benefit uh, that they, they are going to rectify it. But yeah, yeah, I know, I know, because a lot of people, you're not the only one, a lot of people complain. Uh, and I think NIS, NIS is overwhelmed NIS between me, based on what I'm hearing there. And it's sad because a lot of people complain. And, yeah, a lot of people complain. Yeah, here, here, this it's here, not here, a good thing. Food. Here is a report from um, medical art given by Dr. F. William, right? F. Uh -huh. E. C. P. Right? And Dr. Eileen, F. N. C. P. Dash E. Then give me this report here, right? Uh -huh. The person particle disability filed a 14% disability recommended permanent. Now, me last is uh -huh. carrying, here, me carrying this report here, NIS office in New Amsterdam. You see me here when I get this thing from uh, medical life, right? When we came into them, they make a photocopy. Uh -huh. They said that I got to get 15% before I get my permanent money from NIS. Somebody advised me to care back one next one and give them again. So I get two photocopies, give them there. Now, when I go for them to get back something from them, they say the thing last. Me ask the man. If a big raptor living here uh, takes his money. Now, from 87, listen to me, good, right? From 87 to 88, I start to walk back. Then nine months. You know what money they have for that nine months, buddy? $800. Uh -huh. When it ain't going, you claim uh -huh. last, you claim last, you claim this. I say, buddy, I know if raptor living here can eat out only me claim by. So, you know what benefit me? Yeah, boy, and that, you know. That, that's a that's a problem that a lot of people complaining about and uh, NIS need to get it act together. They need to get it to get it on. I don't know what to say there, boy. Um I'm gonna continue thing because there's many cases like you and uh, I think there are thousands of cases like you and everybody that been calling me have a similar situation, like you said, that they're missing years and so on. And NIS is not doing anything but it's no man, then I do nothing. Here, what we want to do for me, right? Well, let me see how it goes. Uh -huh. If you get any idea about how much percent disability you got to get from NIS, right? Before you get on regular people, uh -huh. then you can please inform me tomorrow on your registration. Because you don't give me 40. Well, right? I, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to bring back what's the question? What percentage? What percentage? What do you mean like what? Hello? Yeah, well, listen. Here. No, you asked me a question. What? Yeah, ask me the question. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bring the woman and I'm gonna ask her back the PRO. Fourteen percent permanent disability. You no, know, me came my NIS office in New Amsterdam. They said me got to get fifteen percent. Uh, so me, me miss this paper. This, this um certificate to make up a medical art. Me then miss somebody and one that one uh -huh. teacher by me when I rent a house right and me move out and the, the, the teacher by find by this thing on ceiling and he give me she let me keep on my query this thing. No, me no. no you're going to ask them to come back, go back, come oh back. Say, you're the fittest man. Because what you do for a big guy, you say, really good thing oh you do for everybody. Let's get uh. on the soup. Long may hear discussion from you. Oh, let me see. I'm, I'm going to bring back, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring back that lady there. I'm going to ask her about that 14, 15 percent and see whether maybe she can't look at, look at that, um, the, the, the situation and see whether maybe she could give you some answers. I'm going to bring her back. Yeah. I did promise to bring her back today, but but everybody got yeah, a little busy you know, today. I'm going to try to bring her back before the week is out. I get you, boy. Well, here now, I know, I know, I know, my brother. Uh, put them through the year, right? 
with with um how much pattern disability you intake to figure on permanent people and NIS? Because me get fourteen here. When me carry in my NIS office and young said, then say me gotta get fifteen. So my tell me then get ten and then I collect money. Wow. Four minutes, 45 All right, I'm going to raise this issue with I'm, I'm going to bring her back and I'm going to raise this issue. All right, buddy. I'm glad if we're going to bring she, then we can get to Because you know what you mean to if you get to with you? And where you calling from, what? Yeah, uh, from Cotton Tree here, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Where you calling from? You said Blame One, right? Yeah, Blame One. Cotton Tree. Yeah. All right, my brother. You stay, right. uh, stay you safe and until then, right? I'm going to tell you, right? You like a hat, uh -huh. buddy. You see a play and you can't catch you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear you. I hear yeah, you yeah, talk, yeah. but I'm in contact with you, I can't get in contact. I say you like a house, I see you play my okay, I set a cast and I'll pick you up. I hear you, brother. I hear you. I Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank you very much, Zira. And I want to say, unfortunately, we are down to program timer at the moment. And so it is the second day of September. It's the Amerindian month. And uh, what, what is it that you would have had to know? Um, it is parliament has started and so they are moving right now to have a budget in place uh, for the rest of the year which is four months and uh, the parliament is supposed to convene very shortly i think maybe as early as tomorrow to start uh, looking at that in the meantime uh, i am not going to stop here uh, we are going to continue our talks on a daily basis i want to say thank you very much to everybody who has reached out uh, uh, today has been a pretty difficult day I'm going to try to bring you the situation as I have it to, to you. I'm using, I'm trying to do whatever it is. Like the, the area around the nose, it's a pain, and I'm not sure whether I have another condition or something, or maybe I have a flu that comes on. Um, whatever it is, I, I can share with you guys to say uh, what it is that I'm feeling and how it is. But it's been a pretty difficult day to uh, feel a lot of sorts. But your encouragement, your words of comfort has been. Uh, it's really appreciated. Um, so I want to say thank you very much for joining us here on Kaicho Radio for the Wake Up Gaiana show. And I think we've been waking ourselves up with some of the disclosures been coming out all the way from Eskimo, all the way from Barbies, right across Demerara. I want to say good day. Thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure being with you. And uh, so we are going to continue uh, to keep you awake and to keep you alive and give you hope and give you a voice and that's what this week of the end show is and thank you very much there to the folks on the kite show radio thank you for joining us uh you folks from overseas wherever it is that you would have joined us from it's always a pleasure and uh, of course the many words of comfort and encouragement and uh, what i should use and uh, fuse uh it is it i mean i hear it and i'm going to try to do what i can so do have a pleasant rest of the day, Dr. Yog Mahadio and myself, room 592. This evening, we're going to bring you Dr. Duki. Dr. Duki has been the one who's been doing some um, fantastic uh, surgery. There was a partial replacement of a skull on a patient recently, groundbreaking uh, uh, surgery. Uh, so we're going to bring him on tonight. Uh, what successful guy. He's very proud of uh, Dr. Duki. So many of doctors too who would have been with us, who would have been paying attention, who would have been sacrificing COVID-19. And of course, our policemen and all others who put the shoulders to the wheel to make, us, make, make it a little easier on our people of Guyana. And if we could encourage ourselves, give ourselves a little hope, we could do so much more things. So raise your shoulders, raise your head up, let's put our eyes on the prize. And the price is bringing the end out of the pandemic today, September 2nd. Have a pleasant rest of the day until we see you this evening. And tomorrow, we are going to be back. Uh, the Wake Up Gaiana show at 1 p.m. sharp. We're not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to go anywhere. And I don't want you to go anywhere. Have a pleasant rest of the day. And thank you guys very much in the studio there, Raj and Joshua. Have a pleasant rest of the day, guys.